this week on the Danny Brown Show. So I will say, man, I, I will recommend that toothbrush. I mean, I think it's, I don't know, it's, I don't know the brand, but. Look, your boyfriend's for sure cheating on you, but get this toothbrush, <laughs> all right? That's the move. That's what we're telling you. When you see a guy dressed like this, you know, you got to just realize what you're dealing with, man. He's not, he's not going to be a one-woman man at all, man. This is <laughs> Have you ever played Dungeons & Dragons? Of course, look at me. <laughs> Yo, yo, what's up, yo? It's your boy. I'm <laughs> live from Austin, Texas at Wild May Studios, the Danny Brown Show. I got the booth boys with me. How y'all fellas doing? Great, Danny. What's up, Danny? Yeah, man. I've been good, man. Just been chilling out. Been goddamn playing Diablo. Fucking. I played like seven hours yesterday, man, so I'm a little sleepy, man. Oh, I shit. What, what level little... you at now? <laughs> I, th- I, I made it to like 20, okay. I want to say. So All right. I was grinding. pretty much getting it in. I mean, I was I had played like a few days before, so. But yeah, I'm, I'm still in the grind stage. I got none other than Sam Talent up in that building, man. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm so glad to be here. They call me Diablo. So really? It's, yeah. Uh huh. Goddamn, man. Yeah, because I'm wicked. Oh shit! I didn't know Diablo was so. Um, I mean, I guess you know this. This really my first one, to be honest. It's it's very um, religious. Oh, bro, it's been consuming people's <laughs> lives. Yeah, people pray. You played the altar of Diablo for seven hours yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Was, I mean, that's what sucked me in, the fucking story, actually. So, I mean, that's what thing with me with playing video games, man. Um, if, if the storyline don't really capture me, like, I got to, I want to know what happens. Yeah. That's what it stick me. Like, fucking Starfield is horrible, man. Mm-hmm. God damn it. And I remember seeing um, Bobby Lee talk about he was going to leave his girl because Starfield coming out. Man, that was the worst decision ever, man. But all right, all right. We'll get to <laughs> no, no, let's dig deeper into that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? It's so buggy. I mean, whatever. And you know me, I'm never the one. I love cyberpunk, so I could never trip on that. But Sam Talent, how you doing, brother? Bro, when cyberpunk came out, I told my wife, you mm-hmm. are effectively widowed for two weeks. Really? I will be in this room. You will be out there. We'll be living separate lives. Mm-hmm. I'll be in this mainframe. You can do whatever you want out there, but just don't bother me. And then that game fucking sucked, bro. It, I love Cyberpunk, actually, man. Well, you know, I, mean, it, I it, have to go. It took some time. It actually took some time for them to, you know, to get it. Because that's what's happening right now with video games. They're releasing them in these early stages where yeah. now already. But then, you know, they do updates to them. And, but software, man, I mean, um, um, Cyberpunk, man, has actually been, it's, it's, once they figured it out, man, it's pretty good, man. I like, went over to Ghost of Tsushima almost immediately. Oh, yeah, I love Ghost of Tsushima, too. Oh, yeah, I was living a very honorable lifestyle. Oh, man. I actually like just the way that, um, it, it's just how it looks like an old school kung fu flick. I was Bro, real, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a real beautiful game. So. Dude, when the petals fall off the tree yeah. and you're riding your horse, <laughs> it, like, take me back to old Japan. Yeah, it's, it's a real beautiful game. Yes. I will say that, man. But it, it's it gets difficult at times, man. I didn't finish it. That's, oh, no. That's one of those ones that I didn't finish where I just got so frustrated with it. Like, And now, man, these games, like I say, they're they releasing them in such early stages. They're coming out so fucking quick, man. Like even, you know me, NBA 2K consumes my life. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, it has it. I don't feel like it's the best. I, mean, I had to stop with Madden. Yeah, I had to walk away. Children were beating the hell out of me. It was ruining my day. That's how. That's how you know when you're getting of age. Yeah, when, when kids start whooping your ass in sports games, they don't even know shit about the fucking sport. That's how it is with my nephews. They bust. I don't even play people in NBA 2K. Good call. Um, <laughs> you have to take care it's of yourself. Just me against the computer, man. Yeah. Who are you playing? The Denver Nuggets? Um, no, I'm actually. I, I'm. They have a, um, my errors in it. Where oh, you can yeah, play yeah. A old school like um so I'm playing with um Allen Iverson 76ers. Oh I yeah. Just go back to that phase. I I I I've definitely not um spending any more money playing my career mode and fucking spending $500 a year on a fucking um fictitious NBA game on my own character. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're making your apartment look cool. It's yeah, brutal. I know. It's it's buying all stupid dumb clothes and shit. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's not the best, man. So you out here in Austin, man? How are Austin treating you, man? Oh, it's opened its doors. It's it's been dripping for me, and oh, I've really? been getting in there, man. Yeah, I love Austin. You're actually from Denver, right? Oh yeah, born and raised. Yeah, I'm fucking heading up there this weekend. You sound really excited, Danny. I mean, I mean, I'm sober now. Oh yeah, yeah. So Congratulations. It's not, it's not really, you know, a fun place for me, man. Because I I love weed, man. I, I would still say that, but 
for the most part, man. Last time I was in Denver, I got so it was the weed was so cheap there, man. Yeah, they're giving it away. Yeah, at the airport, they give it to you. Here you it are. It was so fucking cheap, man. And then they got. I, I will say they have the best edibles. Oh sure. That that was one of the. I, I always talk about this bacon that I got out there, man. It was like. <laughs> It was just strips of bacon covered in like brown sugar and yeah. all type of tasty goodness. It was so good that I didn't realize how many pieces I was eating yes. until I was in my hotel room that night and I was fucking seeing stars. Yeah, you're completely zooted I on the pork belly. That's oh, wrong. Man, I couldn't I couldn't help myself though. It was too good, man. But yeah, I'm playing a um, show at the Red Rocks, which I love the Red Rocks, even though I think it's haunted. For some reason, it's completely man. haunted. You know, Red Rocks <laughs> was the first like date I took my wife to because I used to host a film on the rocks thing there, mm -hmm. and that really sealed the deal. You take a girl backstage at Red Rocks, oh, yeah, oh, they're ready to go. I love Red Rocks every time I'm there, they give me an oxygen tank, yeah, and I just walk around with this oxygen tank on, yeah, it's like so. blue velvet in there, yeah, man. So, um, I, I you know, did my research and everything, man. Got up on you, so you, you, you wrote a novel. I wrote a novel, Danny, yes, yes man. I wrote a novel about a comedian. He has his struggles with sobriety. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's in there. He's tapping it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's pounding it. Yeah. Running the Light, available at samtalent.com. And I also seen that you were in a hardcore band before. Oh, yeah, man. I played drums in a bunch of bad bands. Damn, man. How, but, so how was that transition from like doing music and comedy? Like, Oh, it was great. Dude. I mean, the beauty of music was that you had like a team, you know? Mm -hmm. You're out there with the squad, and then you go from that... Like traveling around the world, or not in the world. I was in a van in like you know Kansas City, but uh, and then you're alone up there as a comedian. I really preferred, I think, the uh, atmosphere of uh, of being a musician because you have your band of mercenaries and it's you against the world. You yeah. know, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that's what I always think. Like um, comedy to me just seems like the most hardest art form. Oh yeah, possible. Just being up on stage and you have nothing else to rely on. It's just you and a mic and motherfuckers is just sitting there like make me laugh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, there was that same element, though, because we would play, like, you know, all ages basements and warehouse shows. Doing hardcore shit? Yeah, yeah. So then you have a bunch of, like, 15 year olds wearing studded vests, and they're the same kind of, like, entertain me now, you know? And, like, we didn't wear the cool clothes. I'd be up there in, like, a, a denim shirt yeah, and basketball yeah. shorts and just playing blast beats, and they'd be like, who, is, who are these old men? I was 19. I looked haggard. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I haven't aged well. Hardcore is one of those amusements, man. I can't say that I've. I've dive deep into it i watched a lot of documentaries i actually not too long ago seen a documentary about a band called anal cunt oh yeah anal cunt man ac what the fuck man yeah. that guy was fucked up he wasn't a nice guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah they had a bunch of songs you couldn't say i remember yeah, kids yeah. wearing anal cunt t-shirts to school and having to turn them inside out yeah, it was just it, it really intrigued me to say the least yeah but I, I do i do really i mean not them but i do um fuck with the whole like you know them preaching like straight edge and veganism and all oh, that yeah. type of shit are you a vegan yourself fuck no <laughs> i just had a <laughs> i'm sorry a, danny we just met <laughs> i just had a steak and cheese burrito last night it was amazing wow man diablo and steak and cheese burrito that's, Yo, you see the life that i'm living <laughs> that's clean <laughs> yeah this sober life has treated me well man <laughs> yeah. i can't i mean i will say man I've, I've been doing my best to try to eat healthy and shit you know, especially when I'm on the road, man, because being on the oh, road, man, is really hard. It you know, sucks, bro. You can't <laughs> eat Popeyes out of gas stations and <laughs> yeah. shit, you know, <laughs> truck stop food, you know. Yeah, any sandwich you have to microwave oh, takes a man. year off your life. That's uh, Well, I should be dead then. Yeah, me too. I definitely should. I be getting, I used to eat, I went back in my old hustling days, I used to always eat those cheeseburgers. You get out the gas station for yes. 99 cents, you yes. fucking heat up. And they're disgusting now that, they're I'm, rat that, meat. I, that I'm an adult, you yeah. know. I had I actually I was in Australia not too long ago and I actually got a burger. It, I definitely felt like it was a kangaroo or something. I'm like, man, this is this is not meat at all. It was so disgusting. I thought the Australian food scene. I was just there in August for the month mm -hmm. and I was eating everything, man. Yeah, no, they actually, actually in Melbourne I, they had this dumpling spot. It was the best dumplings that I ever had in my life. Oh yeah, like every time I'm there. And then it's a, one of my favorite restaurant I ever been to is um, called George's which was in Brisbane, which I heard is not there anymore, which made me very sad. I'm sorry to it hear that. It was a um, seafood restaurant, and it was like right off the water, and they said like all the, um, you know, all the fish and everything, it, it, it literally came from the water that you were right above. So yeah. it was like really clean. It was just, it was amazing. I used to get the bugs. Oh, yeah. All that shit, man. Like I, I'm, I'm a person, man, I can... I eat some crazy food. Like I'm, I would definitely try some shit. Like, I'll eat not, anything. Yeah, I'm not scared of that. My DJ... His ass don't eat nothing but fucking chicken strips and macaroni and cheese. That's so it's kind of hard eating when I'm out with him. Yeah. I was in France after Australia. We were eating snails oh, all France. the time, dude. France is like, man, 
I, I've never had. I've I've actually been there. It was like wine country one time. It's yeah, like a, I, I I had some good shit out there, but I never really could eat good in France. I'm always eating like KFC and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can just eat bread and butter in France, and it's a transcendent experience. They're never too nice to me out there, man. Why? I don't know, because I'm black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Always figured, like, you know. <laughs> Those French people are always like, oh, America, you're so racist. It's like, we're allowed to wear hijabs here. You guys outlawed the Muslim church. Mm-hmm. So get off my ass. No, I, I think for the most part, they just want you to really be engulfed in their culture. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so complete Frank yeah, yeah. You, you have to like at least try to like speak French to them. Like if you just walk up speaking English to them, they just really get pissed off. If you ever go to Paris, you have to walk into every store and go, bonjour, madame, yeah, yeah. bonjour. You have to scream bonjour four times before, and then they'll be like, all right, like, I don't, pig one. I don't speak French, man. Yeah. Like, so, all right. All right, we'll hop into some of these ax Dannys. We're here to help you guys. That's right. Ask Danny. First up, we got overthinking a breakup. What's up, Danny? I'm a little bit an obsessive person when it comes to relationships with girls. I don't do anything crazy, but I'm a heavy overthinker. My minds tend to stay on a girl much longer after the breakup than it did when we are together. What can I do to make the breakups more bearable and not overthink them so much? Thanks, and please make scaring the hoes come to Europe. Don't forget Spain. Get another bitch! That's the best way to get over a breakup yeah, what for me. Are you, what the hell are you talking about I here, mean, man? I can say I'm a um, breakups are hard, man. I, I've never really, I'm not the type of person to leave a girl. They always left my ass. Oh, no, Danny. So, yeah. So I've always, um, I mean, yeah, it's kind of hard, man, being lonely when you're used to sleeping in a bed with somebody. I love that intimacy. I love waking up next to my wife. Yeah, it's the best shit. Yeah, it's beautiful. You want to feel them, you want to feel them nice shaved legs against yours at night. Even you know if what they're saying? not shaved. You know, if there's a little bit of gristle down there, you're like, she really loves me. She's letting it all hang out. Oh, yeah, that's a little crazy. Or when you fall asleep with her, like, in the crook, and you're uncomfortable all night, but you can have a little boob action. Mm -hmm. The hand lingers, you know? Yeah, cuddling. I mean, cuddling, I I will say, is not my thing. Me and my girl, we sleep booty to booty. Oh, yeah, ass to ass. (laughs) Yeah, cheek to cheek. (laughs) It's like you're saying hi in prison, putting it on the glass. Yeah, she always be like, oh, do you cuddle? I'll be like, man, my dog don't like that shit, though. She get up in there and she break that shit up. Oh, I thought you were talking. You refer to your girl as your dog. No, for a no, moment. my actual my, my my dog Ditto. Yes. Every time we get to cuddling and shit, she be like, hey, "Don't fuck it, back up." Ditto's jealous. Yeah, she don't like that. But she want me to cuddle her though. That's what it is. Oh my lord. Yeah, but yeah. I love her. I love. I just love cuddling so much. Oh man. You and you that. don't you don't have a body for cuddling. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say you like a big warm blanket. Yeah, you're kind of all elbows over there. You just feel bones on me. It's just like <laughs> what the fuck. All right. <laughs> What's that like? What's it like being able to see the you know indentations of your body? Because I'm over here hiding it all. No, the funniest shit is when you fucking um like me, my skinny ass. Like like, I've been my share of big women. You know, being in the bed with God a big bitch you. and just be like the arm way up here and shit, <laughs> yeah. trying to color her. You don't even know the motherfucker in the bed. You could just hide for the police. I was with a girl once. She was like six two, probably two twenty. What the fuck? Oh, it That's felt like good. An NBA player. Oh yeah, it was like <laughs> being with grandma. <laughs> it was me and Larry Johnson. <laughs> God damn, man! You remember Keith Tractor Trailer who played at Michigan? Mm-mm. Oh Dude. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yo. um, you mean uh, Robert Trailer? Robert Trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not Keith Trailer. Robert Tractor Trailer. Mm-hmm. God, he gave me hope as a young man. Yeah, he got he was he was selling weed, wasn't he? He didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I think he went to jail. <laughs> I think he went to jail for selling pounds and shit. (laughs) God bless him. Shout out to you, Robert. We're thinking of Robert Trailer, man. No one's free until you're free. (laughs) Yeah, there's been a few big players. We had um, the big O was an Oliver Miller. Oh, yeah, dude. He was a big guy. That kid who plays for Memphis. Oh, yeah, that's a big motherfucker. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's from the future. Then it was um, Big Country. Oh, Big Country, dude. No one gave me more pride back yeah. when I... You know when you're like playing as a kid, and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, you're Muggsy Bows because you're little. Yeah. You know? It's like I was always Big Country. Well, big Country was yeah. a beast, man. He just... I don't know, man. I, I feel like a lot of times... It's always this theory, like some players, which is like I, I look at it like that in music too. You know, just because they were they, you know, they had the size and they had the, you know, so but they really didn't care about basketball like no. that. I think Big Country was one of them ones because it's like once he got to the NBA, he's just like whatever, man. Yeah, he didn't care. I, I got the bag. Fuck it. Yeah. You know? I mean, he sunk the Vancouver franchise. Oh, they put man. all that money into him. They had to run away to Memphis. Yeah, definitely. All right, next up we got Sus Boyfriend. Hi, Danny. Long time fan and listener. Lately, I've been noticing my BF never leaves the room without his phone. I'll take entire showers and forget about bringing my phone in. Meanwhile, he has to take 
He has to take his phone just to blow his nose. Hell, even make sure his phone is with him just to grab a snack from the kitchen. It's kind of weird to me that he thinks about it every single time. Am I thinking about it too hard or is this suspicious? Thanks, Danny. Much love. Um, well, I have to take my phone in the bathroom with me all the time because when I brush my teeth, I have an app on my phone that uh, <laughs> helps me brush my teeth. What? Yeah. It's actually one of the coolest. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a very expensive toothbrush. It's about $300. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> and it came with an app. Yeah, it comes with an app. What? And you, it monitors the way you brush your teeth and lets you know when you're missing a spot and where to go and this and that. I will say, man, for anybody you know, I've I've had fucked up teeth my whole life, so I need to do what I can to take care of them. Most of them are fake anyway. That's good. But um, yeah, man, it, it, that it, toothbrush is mapping your mouth. Dan. Yeah, and that's it, what it, it's doing. And it gives you points and scores and shit on how you done that day. Which I, you know, me as a video game player, I'm really always trying to get the hundred. This morning, I got an 86. Well, you were in a hurry. <laughs> I mean, I was doing my best. I mean, what it is sometimes is, is, is it, it, it monitors the pressure. So sometimes if you're over, if, if you're going a little too hard, it'll give you like this big red light, like, hold up. Too close. You're going too hard. You know, you got to slow up. You got to, you know. So, and I was going, I had, had like 12 seconds over pressure. Oh, no. So it, it knocked my score down a little bit, man. You know, but I will say if anybody, you know, if, if, if if you don't think a three hundred dollar toothbrush is too expensive, I mean, you, you only get one set of teeth, so you got to take care of what you got, man. But I will say, I will. I'm riding. You know, I'm riding with this guy. Oh shit! And this in your pocket, yeah. just bare ass. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I keep that thing on me, Danny. God damn it, man! This thing's analog. Yeah, yeah. But so I will say, man, I, I will recommend that toothbrush. I mean, I think it's. I don't know. It's, I don't know the brand, but look, your boyfriend's for sure cheating on you. But get this toothbrush. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the move. That's what we're telling you. Why is he leaving the room to blow his nose? I mean, he got to check. The, I mean, or he could be on prospects. Yeah. He want to check out his bets. You know what I'm saying? He want to see, you know, what's over and under, you know? That's that's a big deal. You might have some stock apps on his phone, yeah. you know, crypto mm-hmm. going, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, say, you know, that he's cheating just because he likes to take his phone everywhere, you know? I, I think um, every, every man wants to have their privacy. Yeah, you need separate lives. <laughs> I mean, my wife has my passcode. You yeah. know, she can go crazy in there. Oh, man. But yeah, I take my phone into the bathroom. That's yeah, the only time wanna, I'm ever alone. She's click clacking outside, yeah, you, wanna, you know? I want to get in there. You know, I, I got games on my phone. I got to see what Hezbollah's up to. You know? His tiny ass. That's the only time I really check social media is when I'm in the bathroom and shit. You know, yeah. I don't really be. I try my best. I, I deleted them all off my phone. Yeah, and then how quickly the do you re-download them? Every time I leave, like when I go on a road, because you just mm-hmm. get bored, and then you just want to just see what what's fuck going on in the world. I yeah. feel like that's the only way I get a lot of news and shit. Because I don't know if if I literally don't have any like social media or nothing like that on my phone, I don't know what the fuck is going on. It's not yeah. like I'm watching the news or like. How are people doing... in China brushing their teeth? You know, you got to keep up. That's your passion. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that blew my mind that you have an app to brush your teeth. Yeah, it's very dope, man. I will say, man. If I, I mean, I know three hundred dollars sound crazy for a toothbrush, but like I say, it's it's your, it's your only teeth, man. You I'm I'm trying to do. get little peaks, and I'm liking everything I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. I I had really fucked up teeth, man. Like I, it was something I didn't. Really, I used to. Um, I was one of those guys that, that just get depressed. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people probably um, could probably you know relate to that. You know, you get depressed and you don't shower, mm-hmm. you don't brush your teeth. You just in a you just in your crib just. Feeling like a piece of shit. So I used to yeah. be like that. I was one of those kind of guys, man. I know when I'm sad when my house smells like a ferret cage. Oh, you know, man. it's like I got to go hose off. That's the worst. Uh huh. I used to date a girl. She had a rabbit, man. Oh, no. That was the deal breaker, man. Like going over her house and just, it just it was a very peculiar smell that I wasn't used to, man. Yeah, it's like, county fair odor. Like one thing about me, man, is, is cleanliness is next to godliness. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just, I don't know. I, I just can't deal with with a girl with a nasty house, man. If that's true, I've strayed far from God. <laughs> <laughs> He's forgotten about me. <laughs> I've gone apostate from that church. God damn it. All right, next up we got Chronic Masturbator. All right, I sent this one in. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dear Danny, I'm a chronic masturbator. My right arm is significantly bigger than my left arm. On most of my shirts, the right sleeve is tight and the left sleeve is hanging loose. People at the grocery store in my office... People at the grocery store and in my office. I was about to say, you got an office in the grocery store? What the fuck? <laughs> He's living a different life than yeah. us. <laughs> Make comments and it messes with my self-esteem. My left arm is weak and uncoordinated, so it cannot stimulate my shaft sufficiently. Oh. Do you have any tips to restore balance to my life? Righty. I don't think this is I don't think this is true, because I've jacked off a lot too, and I I ain't, I ain't seen uh, no difference in my arms. I wish 
I could get, get some gains from jacking off, man. Oh, oh my lord! You know, I'll switch up. You know, but I'd I'll, look like Mega Man if this was true. Yeah, so I, I, I think that's a myth. I don't, I don't think um you really. I think you're just trolling. Yeah. I don't really think that's a myth. But you know, chronic masturbation, man, it's um it's really a thing, man. I was in Japan. They have these eggs. Oh yeah, they. they I, I, um, I've, I've experienced the egg. They had one. Um, experienced the egg. I've experienced You're the man egg of the world on a lonely night. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? It's a. They actually give. It's the 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 Riverton Hotel in New York. Oh, that they give you eggs? No, they they don't give them to you, but they have them like you know where um you know you can you know where they had the snacks and all that shit at. <laughs> yeah. They just got that egg there. And I I remember you know I stayed there a few times. I remember looking at it and I joked at it like oh they, they fucking putting sex toys in hotel rooms now. What kind of weird shit is this? You know. <laughs> In one of those late lonely nights, crack into the egg. I got to looking at that egg like it was looking like a bad bitch to me. Like, let me check this motherfucker out. Hold up. <laughs> but the worst thing is that you know when they get to charge a room the next day, they're like, "Oh, this motherfucker used the egg." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta leave out of there with your head and chain and all that shit. Yeah, he went through a dozen eggs. <laughs> yeah, like man, he went through the egg. Like you gotta call down there, man. I used mine yesterday, man. Can you send a new egg up? <laughs> I need a half a dozen eggs up here, stat. But you know, now since I've been a one woman man, yeah. you know. You know, being real faithful with my girl and everything. I wish more hotels put eggs in their room. You know Me what I'm too, saying? Man. Like, you know, you need that. You need that stimulation. But I will say, man, as as a a sex toy reviewer, it's, it's a three out of it's a three out of five. The egg? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's it ain't hidden like that. I need some. I don't know, man. It it just it it covers your head. It looks weird. You know, I want I want to bust through the motherfucker. You need an app for your egg. Oh, they got apps. Yeah. They got no, apps. but you need the same thing for like brushing your teeth. It shows you the pressure you're exerting. The thing is, man, men's sex toys compared to women, it, it, they're, they're not really like um, forward thinking with them. Still in the Stone Age. Yeah, over they here. still like, you know, they, they still a little bit, you know. Yeah. Every now and then I'll see something like, hold up, that looks a little fun. You yeah, know, and you check it out. It's not, it's not really hitting like you think, you know. I mean, I could make a sex toy out of a pumpkin that's been in the sun for too long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't really know. And need that's a lot. the thing, too, man. Uh, most of them, you know, like, like you know, they're not warm. Like, you need something to warm, you know, like, it's, and, and to warm a flashlight, it's going to take you, like, 30 minutes, man. Who wants to pre-plan that type of fucking jacket Yeah, you're off? just leaving it on your dashboard for a while. You got to boil some water in a pot, and then you got to <laughs> yeah. put the put put the flashlight in there and let that chill for a minute, and then yeah. you got to take them out, and then let them cool down. Mm -hmm. You don't want to burn your dick off. I, I, am I exposing too much information, the type no, of shit that no. I, type of shit that I've been into in my life? Now that you're with your lady so hard, have you noticed that you're not jerking off as much? Because I like to save my essence for my wife. To be honest, I, I've, I've, it, it, the, um, just without me drinking and you know not doing, just being sober, it, 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 it dropped drastically. To be yeah. honest, like I think a lot of that shit. I mean, I used to jerk off a lot being hungover. Oh my god! You just wake up. I don't know how I thought that would help, but oh, you just be like I'm hungover. Fuck it. Yeah. Just, beat this motherfucker off i earned this one then you beat off like kind of limp and you're like mm -hmm. oh no why wasn't i hard am yes. i dying so that would be a thing of just being you know or i don't know but for the most part i haven't i haven't really been fucking myself that like like that much i'm proud of you danny yeah you're growing I think, man yeah I, I think so i, I don't know man but I, I think it's just because um most of my um sex life revolved around drinking and drugs yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been kind of harder for me to be horny like that yeah. know, since being sober and shit. So, but it's coming back. It's been coming back, but it, it still ain't. I'm still not a fucking filthy animal. I, I'm not a <laughs> the way I was when I was fucking doing blow all the time and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm just. I don't know. I think I'm getting being normal now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think this I'm is called fucking, growth. I'm not a pervert anymore. You know, <laughs> you've developed. All right, we're hopping to some of this white people shit. No, no, let's keep talking about the egg. <laughs> 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 the egg ain't hitting like that. I was like I say, it's a three out of five. It's a three out of five. You know. All right. Next up, we got Dungeons and Dragons. White people shit. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for the music you've made over the years. I've been an avid listener since Triple X. Back in 2017, I begun to run a Dungeons and Dragon game. A few months in, I ended up crafting an entire dungeon with its own story based on atrocity exhibition. What the fuck? What? Secretly, it was a trick to my players to listen to the album and it worked. The players always enjoyed it. We called it Danny Dungeon. Oh. However, do you think D&D &D is white people shit? Thanks again for all the music and best wishes. No, I wouldn't say Dungeons and Dragons is white people shit. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those games that just last for so fucking long. Yeah. And, you know, niggas don't have the intention span for that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, this thing is for uh, 
losers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what I would say. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Of course. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I played Dungeons and Dragons. I really, um, I mean, I've, 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 I've seen that they, you know, they do it in like, um, like, you know, board game places or like vintage video game shops and yeah. they'd be having like, you know, tournaments or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I, yeah. I actually thought about, you know, partaking in one of those one day, you know, just to meet some friends out here. Yeah, just popping in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They would lose their minds. If you showed up and you're like, hi, I'd like to be a dwarf today. They'd be like, whatever you want, Danny. I don't know. It, 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 do I have a fan base of people that play Dungeons and Dragons? Of course. <laughs> of course you do. You're a multifaceted entertainer that's been entertaining the world for years, Danny. You've got some fucking losers in the squad. God damn it. It can't man. just be all Molson Ice nonstop. I thought all my fans were like, cool. Sorry to break it to you. <laughs> Danny, I'm a fan. <laughs> There's a population of your fan base that looks like me. <laughs> but yeah, I I, I, I could actually, um, I get it, because I'm a bit of a nerd myself, man. And now I, I can say that listening to my music, man, it, it does have some nerdish qualities to it. Just even with the voice. Like, eh, who the fuck talks like that? Fucking nerdy motherfuckers, but... I mean, I would say, man, I love my nerds, man. Shouts out to y'all, man. You oh, know? I love them. They spend money themselves, you know? Yeah. It's not like they're fucking taking girls on dates or anything. They don't have to raise their kids. So all the money goes to our pockets. God damn it. Fucking Dungeons and Dragons. I actually, um, I downloaded Baldur's Gate, yeah. but I've been... Um, it's a slippery slope. You like it? No. Oh, why not? I'm not into that kind of stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because I'm huge into role-playing games and shit, so... Yeah. I figured out, but I just haven't really had the time since I've been um, since I got locked into Diablo. Mm -hmm. I mean, around this time, I always be going two K crazy, but it it originally hasn't um, grabbed me by the by the chokehold that it usually does every year. Yeah, I I think I'm growing up. I think you are. I'm growing up, but I'm just like fuck. I don't want to fake like I'm being an NBA. I rather you know. All right. Think kill, like you're crawling through a dungeon. Yeah, and kill demons and shit. Yeah, yeah, beheading know? skeletons. Trying to figure out what Lilith got going on, you know? I think it's white people shit. All way in. All right. What? Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. You agree. Hey, I don't know no niggas that play that shit. All right. Mortician. Hi, Danny. My boyfriend recently asked me if I ever seen a black mortician. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we concluded that touching the dead and giving them makeovers must be white people shit. I don't know. Actually, I just look it up, and some of the first pictures popped up on Google was a movie called Mortician starring Method Man. <laughs> I never seen that. Um, me either. I don't believe in it, though. Let me know what you think. Love, Kona. Uh, <sighs> yeah, Method Man was, God damn it. It's from 2011. It's <laughs> <was> hilarious. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> look at the cover, man. Look at that hat. <laughs> this actually looks like an album cover. Yes. <laughs> he rebranded as the Mortician. Oh, shit. Huh? I'm actually gonna have to check this out now, just for the just for the last. Even though Method Man's an amazing actor, man, I will I will say that, man. But someone transitioning from rap music to to being an actor, man, I wouldn't think that Method Man would be as great as he is. But he kills it, man. Everything I've seen him in, he kills it. Oh yeah, he has an actor's head. He has that huge head. Um, I never heard that. That's a thing. Oh yeah, a lot of like very famous people have massive skulls. It's a whole proportion thing where it's like if your body's like five heads tall. For some reason, the human eye is drawn to you. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know how to go about this one, man. Um, a mortician, man, I mean, it has to be done. You know, so regardless of what race it is, I don't know. I don't, I just don't. How do you even go about being a mortician? I think you're born into it. I think your family is a long line of morticians. Mm-hmm. And then you are a young uh, apprentice. You know, you're 15. You're having some fun with the bodies. Next thing you know, you're out of college. Your dad's like, you got to take over the business. I think this speaks to the socioeconomic struggles of the black community because they don't own yeah. mortuaries. Yeah. It was one that was owned in um, Detroit a, a long time ago. And um, they weren't, they was hiding the bodies in the attic. They was doing all type of fucked up shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fucked up, man. It was a crazy story. What? Yeah, man. Like yeah, what? Was, what were I, they? I, I don't even want to. Dump, I can't even really even because I, I'm no. I'm gonna get. It was a while ago. I'm we can't get delve some into shit this. Wrong, but yeah, but you said your um, wife is from. 
Oh, yeah, Detroit. she's from Dearborn. Dearborn. Uh-huh, she's over there. They got the chicken shawarmas out there, man. Oh, yeah, they got oh, all the man. halal food, man. So do you you visit Detroit often? All the or? time. Oh, shit. My niece is up there. Oh, shit. Oh, I got to go say hi to her. Shout out to sh- little Susu over there. That's right. Yeah, I love Dearborn. I love Michigan. Uh, I love Detroit. Detroit's cool because it's kind of like you're in a video game. Really? <laughs> it's just this, it's like uh, this gigantic city that if you go downtown, mm-hmm. middle of the day on a Tuesday, no one's down there. No. Yeah. I mean, it has gotten better in recent times. I mean, like right before COVID happened, like, you know, the pandemic and all that shit. Shit was kind of popping a little bit, man. But soon as that shit just like sucked the life out of shit. So I don't know, but it's been, I guess it's coming back slowly. I think there's a, a renaissance going on in Detroit. Yeah. That I mean, it definitely has gotten better, even just far as like people visiting. Because was, that was never a thing where you no. would like go downtown and just like hang out at random places and you meet a motherfucker. You'd be like, I'm from here, I'm from there. It wasn't like, it wasn't that. Yeah. It was definitely like a. And downtown in general, it was it wasn't a place to even go. No, no, no. Like it was it wasn't shit to do down there. And now it's been changing. It's a lot of cool restaurants and shit. I, I lived downtown before I moved here. Yeah. And it was I mean, it was during the fucking pandemic, but like the little the few months that I had living down there right before everything shut down and shit, it was popping. I was I was loving it. I'm happy to see Detroit bouncing back. Yeah. It was the Paris of the Plains. It was a major metropolitan city, mm-hmm. you know, and then just disappeared. The white flight issue that affected Detroit, Yeah, you know? And yeah. then it was the riots and shit that happened in the 60s. Mm-hmm. That kind of fucked a lot of shit up. But, I mean, and it just never fucking recovered since no. the 60s, which is fucking crazy. I know. The thing is about Detroit, like, you can still, like, just venture off in, like, some hoods and you'll see, like, two houses on a whole block. Like, yeah. literally nothing but fucking fields and fucking burnt up houses and shit. So it's like they, as much as they're doing, like, you know, gentrifying the city and shit and fucking, um, you know, downtown or, like, outskirts. Like, a place like Hamtramck we was mm-hmm. talking about. Like, Hamtramck was, used to be fucked up, man. Oh, yeah. And now it's, like, cool hipster shit. Like, you know, coffee shops and shit yeah. <laughs> here and there. You know what I'm saying? Did you participate in Devil's Night when you were a lad? Um... I mean, the thing is, we had we had curfews and shit. I see. So you had to be like, I think it was like maybe I want to say five p.m. Yeah. You had to be in by five p.m. If not, your ass was going to jail on Devil's Night yeah. specifically, especially for uh, teenagers like yeah. people under eighteen. If you were out after five p.m. or something like that, they was locking your ass up, and that's the last thing I wanted. My mom was coming fucking getting me fucking from a um, fucking precinct, you motherfucker. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it ruins Halloween. Because you're probably grounded on Halloween then. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The most fucked up shit about Devil's Night to me is that I actually found some beauty in it, man. <laughs> I know, it's so fucking dark, but I remember as a kid, man, just like, you know, just like being out, I mean, like being on my porch or like looking out the window and just seeing everything on fire. Yeah. And just like looked at, so it, it was kind of beautiful to me, man. <laughs> the flame spoke to you. Yeah, I don't know, man. I used to, or you watch the news and they'll show like an overview of the city and shit, yeah. and you'll just see everything on fucking fire, and you'll be like, ah, oh, man, this shit looks crazy. But the weirdest shit used to be, like you said, the next day is Halloween, and you go trick or treat, and it just everything just smelled. Like that's to me, like that almost give me like you know childhood memories or something. If I smell something on fire, yeah, burning house. Yeah, it just <laughs> reminds me of back. Halloween. If I smell a fucking, if I just smell like burnt shit, it just yeah. makes me think about Halloween. Man. Arson takes me back to an innocent time. Oh my god! Yeah, and that's like very uh, unique just to Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, was it right? wasn't it wasn't anywhere. I actually seen a documentary about. I think it was in Italy, and it was about these kids that they would go steal all these trees. And they would fucking put trees in like um, abandoned like buildings and shit. And then like on one night they get all their trees together. Then they burn the motherfuckers. Okay. And that was like their ceremony like shit. They, they, they were like doing crazy shit like steal the biggest tree out the fucking mall. Like they put the big ass Christmas tree. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? They'll go in that bitch. They'll sneak in late night steal that tree. And then they was beefing with other gangs that steal trees. Like the motherfuckers are fine. They stash house where they got their trees and they'll go steal the trees. It was actually on Vice. Huh. Yeah, it was actually dope. I, I think it was called. I can't. I don't, I don't get me to think. Tree thieves. Yeah, yeah. It was some shit like that. But Italy I, I, is really in the Middle Ages. If this is how the kids are entertaining themselves. Yeah, that shit was crazy, man. But uh, that's the only place I haven't been that I really want to go. Oh, you gotta go. It's fucking Italy. You'd love it. They yeah. would embrace you. <laughs> oh, they would, man. Over there in Rome, your DJ could eat a bunch of pizza. He'd love it. I found out that. Um, Pizza outside of America is a total different thing. Oh, it's thick. Like we've been, you know, we've had pizza all because that because I have pizza on my rider. So after the fucking show, we always get a pizza. And certain places, man, the pizza is not 
It's not like Pizza Hut here or no shit. Like, it's a total different thing, man. They don't even cut their pizza in some places. You no. gotta fucking tear that shit apart, all type of weird shit. It was like, and it'd be fucking full of leaves and shit on it. Fucking, they don't even put tomato sauce. It'd just be a tomato on that motherfucker. Like, yeah. What yeah. the fuck is going on, man? <laughs> so, that's it's, it's basil. There's, <laughs> you say leaves, I say basil. Yeah, you it's know? The fucking leaves and shit. Like, what is this leafy shit on my pizza, man? So, well, the Italians love trees. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I've, I've actually took an. Um, pizza off my rider and i just got chicken wings now so oh, no. I've, been, I've been on a chicken wing eating tour okay for the most part that's why you're so lean i wouldn't say that man i just um what are you I gonna try and steal fat valor you look great oh thank you i'm over here sweating it's 63 in this room <laughs> i know the day i finally was able to wear a jacket yeah i went out this morning it was um uh, i know i'm, I'm getting uh adapted to texas because i went out this morning it was 74 degrees i was like oh it's kind of cold yeah it's kind of cold today it ain't i mean it ain't been fucking 100 degrees man so that's been a good thing all right man we'll get ready to start getting up out of here in a minute it's, uh, oh we got some drip sets Ooh, drip set I don't know why I made that noise. We do. That hasn't been a thing. All right, let's check them out. My balls are a real drip set right now. Yeah, it's, it was New York Fashion Week. The Booth Boys are in there huffing gas. Sure are. <laughs> Sorry. We're, there you go. Whoa. This is a drip set. Oh, my God. This is actually a look, though. It looks I mean, like a creative I, player in Cyberpunk. I know, right? I can't pull this off. I don't got the muscles and shit, man. But, you know, the homie Peggy, he be rocking this look sometime, man. So I, I can't say that this is drip. What 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 show was this? This is... Looks like Fashion Life Tour Collection. Okay. But, yeah, this is some... Um, that's, that looked like sex tourism. Yeah, like, this man should be on a chain. <laughs> I'm surprised he's standing up. He's not on all fours while people are eating off of that's him. It's like when they tell you, like, the, the, the old white women be going to Jamaica and shit. He be getting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Getting digged down by the Mandingo. That look blown like, out by this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like he on the beat selling it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> what a beautiful life that is. Oh, my Lord. So that's what that is right there. All right. Let's see what we got next. Oh, that's Janet right. Jackson. Oh, yeah. Why her face look like that? I don't know, dude. She looks like she's suffering strokes. Is that in this makeup photo. or like. A, <laughs> no. That's, it's like that's botched plastic surgery. I mean, but it's like light in the middle of her face and like dark everywhere else. I mean, is, is this like was that the plan or is that just the flash from the camera? Maybe it looked like they elongated her head. I can never say anything bad about Jenny Jackson, man. I was like my 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 teenage crush and shit, man. During like um, fucking Pleasure Principle and all that shit, man. Oh yeah, fucking Control and all that shit, man. She so, showed the world her nipple. Yeah, which was a crazy thing, man. That, that, I think that whole shit, man. Like now, bitches just walk around with their fucking nipples out, poking through a t-shirt like it ain't nothing. So she kind of, she kind of was poor thinking with that, you know. She was the first to free the nipple. Yeah. But I always thought that shit was fake when they was talking about there was a, a wardrobe malfunction, which mm -hmm. I learned that 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 term never been used before then. <laughs> no, they cooked that up. The CIA got on that immediately. Wardrobe malfunction. I mean, it is what it is. Shout man. out to Justin Timberlake to uh, yeah. facilitating. That boob slip. But Jenny Jackson, man, for her age, man, she still looks all right, man. She, yeah, she's dressed like Neo's girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is pretty hot, though. Like, you know, it almost looked like latex. I fucks with this. You know I love this look right here. That's solid. That's easy. Yeah, that's comfortable right there. That mm -hmm. ain't trying too hard. That's just, that's dip right there. That's drip right there. He do look like the dude that'll steal your tabbies, though. <laughs> So you gotta watch out for niggas that's dressed like this. You know what I'm saying? The bitches gotta watch out. That's just straight scammers. You know what I'm saying? He would never be faithful. No. He would never be faithful. He just this look right here says I'm gonna cheat on you, bitch. So when you see a guy dressed like this, you know you gotta just realize what you're dealing with, man. He's not. He's not gonna be a one woman man at all, man. This is. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah i mean that's just straight scammer that's almost like them yahoo boys you know nigerian scammer look yes. you know what i'm saying <laughs> he's been kind of he's been catfishing old women he catfish men yeah he don't give a fuck no this guy's got like a thousand social security numbers in his pocket right yep. now yeah <laughs> i'm gonna cheat got on the, you bitch <laughs> yeah that's that look right there i'm gonna cheat on you bitch you see with that smile yeah. but he's gonna be the nicest man in the world he's gonna fucking take care of you take you to all the nice restaurants he's gonna he, he's gonna be scamming on that oh, shit too yeah. he's gonna be there oh he's the type of motherfucker be like oh i think i left my wallet in the uber <laughs> can you get this one for me babe 
<laughs> He's got an accent that no one's ever had before. <laughs> Can you yeah. get this one for me, babe? <laughs> I think I left my wallet. Oh, uh, I left my wallet in my I other fringe I, vest. Oh, I think I left my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you scamming motherfucker. I'm hip to you. Shouts out to the boy, Lil Nas X, man. He always got to pull some shit out. It's just a long skirt. But yeah, man, he got the muscles. Yeah. You know, he's a freaky motherfucker, man. That's all this says right here, man. Oh, yeah, he's got fucking space sexuality. Yeah, this is not even... Yeah, this is not... This is out of this world shit, man. That's I, I can't say nothing bad about Lil Nas X. I actually love Lil Nas X music, man, to be honest. Me too. He's one of the dopest... Um, you know, just, I mean, the way he put the shit together and just pretty much the whole come up, man. How oh, yeah. him just making a fucking, a joke song for Red Dead Redemption and fucking, now you see where he at, man. So, shouts out to Lil Nas X, man. Uh, he would do, like, really crazy stuff to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if he had access to me, imagine what he would, he would turn me out in new wild ways, man. <laughs> like, there's no, we should never be allowed <laughs> in any kind of sexual situation, because he'd be like spinning. Oh shit! Maybe like handstands involved somehow. God damn it! Oh man. yeah, dude. Imagine him just crawling all over me. Oh, it'd be over. Yeah, it'd be over. It'd be treating me like a human beanbag chair. You gonna be the old white lady on a sex tourism deal? Oh yeah. Uh huh. I'll be. I would be fucking wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> My shit would be inside out, dude. <laughs> Look at those God abs. Damn it. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh lord. Shouts out to Lil Nas X, man. Yeah. He's a beast. Lil Nas, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> all right there's some there's some cyberpunk action going right here yes i don't know what to say man i wouldn't date a woman that dressed like this to be honest yeah i want to be able to see your wrists i mean i just i don't know man it's just it's just too much going on man i want to see you know I, I i she got the boobs out you mm -hmm. know but i don't know man i'm just she's got them i like that i'm just scared of this she just looked like she gonna ask you for your credit card how do you have a conversation with this woman it's, it's not a conversation. She's just going to talk about her the whole time. Yeah. What do you talk about? Different types of uh, juices? Do you ever go to these kind of things? I've been. I yeah. haven't been invited back. <laughs> 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 but I was actually in the um, fashion show. Shouts out to my boy, Mark Maneri. It's actually a Mark Maneri jacket right here, though. So, yeah. I've actually walked in the show before, but I've been to a few, and they were great. Yeah. I actually, I, they need to have me back, man. I would love to come back, man. I want to go to Paris Fashion Week so bad, man. Yeah, that's, that's the drip shit. That's yeah. the drip set. But, yeah, man. Um. Fashion Week, man, it's just it's just one of those things, man, where it's a lot of scamming going on. So you oh, got yeah. to be careful, man. You got to be careful. All right, man. We're spinning the wheel and we'll get up out of here. Spinning the wheel. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Danny, thank you for having me. Oh, man. It's great. Zolo. Rolo. Zolo the homie, man. He uh, his ass ain't in the booth today, huh? He no, not today. He um, blew up. He don't need me no more. No, Zolo's the homie, man. We always kicking it and shit, man. But yeah, the other, at the last show, man, he we seen Brolo come out, man, and that nigga get them drinks in him, man. He, you just know he was in a frat before. He just give me that. He he didn't haze the nigga before. Like I get Zolo didn't haze the motherfucker before. I have literally no idea what's going on right now. Zolo, that was the homie that brought you back here. Zolo, shout yeah. out to you, buddy. But Zolo and definitely Hayes, the motherfucker. He done waterboarded a nigga, all type of shit, man. So, but that's the boy, man. Zolo about his business, man. So, shouts out to Zolo, man. So, does right. this mean Zolo gets fired? What does the wheel have to do with Zolo? I don't know how he put his own cell phone there, man. Did he I did that. that. <laughs> Zolo's the homie, man. Ain't that funny that it landed on his ass, though? Yeah, it's almost like it was a work. Did you rig this solo? Nah. Nah. He wouldn't have wanted that. All right, we'll get up out of here, man. You want to plug some shit? Yeah, I want to plug my uh, my rap group, Clandestine Apostles. What the fuck? Yeah, check them out on Spotify, y'all. That sounds like you would go through like Wu-Tang Generator. <laughs> Can you that name? It was me, my wife, my buddy Pat, uh, and we were just very stoned around the house, and mm -hmm. Pat had a couple beats, and we hopped on them, and boy, howdy, did they come out good. So shout out to Clandestine Apostles. Clandestine Apostles, yeah. man. What's Ops that? on the lookout when we come to the cookout. Oh, shit, even got bars. Oh, dude, you would, I think, be excited. <laughs> it's actually, a, oh, this show yeah, right ready. there, Spotify <laughs> right there, Clandestine Apostles. Oh, oh yeah. shit, this yeah. is really real. Uh-huh, zero monthly listeners, that's us right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> this shit goes hard, man, it's the future. <laughs> I'm definitely going to listen to this. Yeah, man. throw that on uh, next time. <laughs> the Clandestine Apostles. Yeah, yeah.
I can't say I have a um, bass vocabulary. So what the fuck does that mean? Oh, nothing. It's gibberish. You know, like consciousness rap in the '90s. Yeah. When they'd be like, you know, just trying to like link. Yeah, yeah. There's our two songs. Like, like poor righteous teachers. Yeah, yeah. Cosmic <laughs> indignity and prophetic epiphany. Which one do you recommend here? Oh man, they're both such. They they go so hard. They're both bangers. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Not, not the ambient music playing. No, no. It kicks in. So, you know, the beginning of this is when the producer wants to hop on. Yeah, he got the filters. Yeah, and then, you know, when... He got the... Oh, shit. <laughs> this is Patrick. He is pretty dope, though. Well, wait till I hop on. My rap name is Thoracic Cavity. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my wife's about to come in. <laughs> With the auto tune. Hey, oh yeah, this is a uh, Dr. Emily Talent. <laughs> this is hilarious. Man. Well, hey, hold on. I think there's artistic merit. Here I come. Hold on. You're about to sign me, Danny. <laughs> really revolutionizing the game here. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if we're not at the top of Spotify after this. No, the crazy part about it is actually music. Like motherfuckers that's taking it serious I make know. shit like this. I know, dude. I know. Anyone what who listens hilarious. to this, they kind of roll their eyes initially and then they're like, oh, you guys actually tried sincerely. No, that was funny, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Thank you for having great me. Great meeting you, man. Man, when we first met, <laughs> the handshake really rocked me. I mm -hmm. biffed that. That was terrible. Yeah, you know I like to do the dab hug. I know, and I went for just the handshake, yeah, I'm and the then hood. we went through, and no. they, oh, God, I was like, oh, well, I just fucking I blew it with Danny Brown. I it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Been no, a fan forever, dude. Thank you, man. It's yeah, been great, man. Happy for you. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. All right, peace out. We out, motherfuckers. Love y'all. Thank you.